Okay, so here is my frame. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Bring my mic a little closer if I can. Uh, here's my frame. And you've got the horizontal pieces that should be 470 each. And you can actually measure the gap in between them to make sure they are exactly the same length. I mean, you probably would have already measured them anyway. In that case, they're 470 perfectly. Those are exactly 470 this direction. Yep. And if you flip it over, you should have the exact same sizes at this end. And if I did my cutting correctly, they will be. So 470, 470. 470 and 470. Now the trick when you're measuring frames is to make sure you're measuring consistently. So what I'm using here is I'm not going on the outside um, because these tape measures have a little bit of a thing on that moves. So as I said before, what matters is not the exact measurement but being consistent about your measurement and that the lengths are exactly the same. So I'm going for 470, that's what I should have cut. If it was me reading 469, that would be okay as long as they're all 469 that are parallel. So this one is parallel to this one, this one should be parallel to that one. These two have to be critically the same length, these two have to be critically the same length. And if I'm talking about this one, then I'm also talking about this one and this one and this one also being the same length and then this one if it was say 471 millimeters that'd be okay as long as this one this one and the one here this one is also 471 okay that's what's critical and if they all are correct and they're all straight and they've all been cut with the nice square ends then when you assemble it it should be at a proper square and in this case because all these sides are all the same length it should be actually a, a proper square as well not a rectangle depending on what you're building now when you the, the way to make sure this is square though is to make is to measure from the diagonals and compare the measurements so if I come across here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the tape measure in the middle of the right on the point in the middle of the tape measure and you just need to be consistent because it can make a difference. And then when I get to this end, I'm going to look at the, the edge nearest me for the measurement, so where the millimeters are. And what I've got here is 72, 721 millimeters. Now, if I go here and I measure the same way, so I'm putting that in the middle and I'm using the millimeter side, I should have 720, yeah, that's about 720 and a half. That's okay. There's no point in trying to fuss with that half a millimeter over that bigger range. Now, the next thing to do is obviously check the other side. So we'll flip it over. Now we'll do the same here. So it should be. 700 because they're all the same sizes they should be 721 which that one is that's beautiful and this one so we've made sure the bottom bit that we would had up top before is square and it is a rectangle and this one is 721 as well so that's really good I'm lucky there now the other squares that you need to check are actually the ones on the angles down so I'll do the one that you can see here so we're going to go from the bottom my right up to here now this is going to be a longer distance um, to the corner and check it and this is 860 866 it seems to be now if I measure the other side it should also be 866 and it is 866, yep, so that's right in the money. And we'll do the same 
for the other side and if all of these measure the exact same distances 866 865 and a half no nope, I got that wrong over there 866 so we do each one I did the other two off camera um, but as you can see that's what you've got to do and if all of those are working out correctly so that and that from down here to up up here and down here to up here etc so all of your diagonals uh, if they all end up working out equal lengths then you know that your frame uh, is nice and square and in this case mine thankfully is uh, I had that one side that was just a half not even barely a half a millimeter out but if all the rest are reading pretty much correctly um, at least certainly less than a half a millimeter out then I'm good to proceed to the next section now those last two sections that we saw that were on the cross pieces I'm just I haven't cut these yet to length but they're just going to mount here and your bed is going to mount on them assuming this is the bottom of the frame so your bed will just mount these will, these will be bolted to the frame with some corner pieces and then your bed will be mounted inside on these and these are the supports for that so these ones are not critical as far as their length if they're a millimeter off and they're not the same length it really doesn't matter as long as they're straight so that your bed sits flat all right so that's pretty much it for putting the frame together um long-winded way of saying it all but it pretty much is is pretty easy okay as long as you can cut things or get them pre-cut as i said in the earlier in the video if you're buying from Misumi, they will cut to the lengths you need and they will thread the ends of the ones that need threading as well. Um, you'll pay a little premium for that, obviously over the base price of the extrusions, but they will do it and it will save you all that hassle. Let's uh, get a nice better view. So that's the frame assembly and once we're all done, we should end up with a frame quite like this this is the next stage that we're going to do i'll do a separate video for that because it's installing the motors um, assemblies and the, for the z drives and uh, the pulleys and the linear rails okay so what we've got to is is this stage here in the frame build i'm going to leave it at that for this video so i will see you in a few days if not less for the next one where we start doing the z rails i've got a lot of those pieces already prepped um, I'm not going to cover actually 3D printing things in any of these videos. Um, these pieces need to be printed in ABS and things like that. So that's a topic for another video really. And there are plenty of videos online about printing ABS. And if you don't have another print, there is a program called Print It Forward through Voron Designs where you can actually pay uh, one of the people that's built a Voron um, to print the parts for you and typically you'll pay the cost of materials plus shipping. It's not a for-profit business as far as I'm aware. Um, so, you know, I don't know how much it will cost, but probably over, well, over a hundred dollars, but it'd be worth it if you aren't able to print your own parts. And usually you'll get very high quality prints from the people that do the print it forward because it is a validated people through the Voron design team. Uh, anyway, I will see you on the next video when we will continue the build with the Z drives.